explore why local history is important, we need to understand what local history is. A pedantic but useful definition would be, local history is people and events in proximity. More broadly, and probably more useful, local history is the interactions of people, places, and events over time in proximity, and the context around these interactions. But local history is much more than dates, people, and their actions. It's also about the community. We're all part of multiple communities, a work community, a school community, church, hobby groups, social clubs, and so on. And each community has its own culture. As social creatures, we are a composite of our experiences, and these are shaped by the communities we engage with over the course of our lives. We may no longer actively engage with some communities, but we're still a product of our engagements with them. This is important to remember because every new community we engage with is another level or layer of community added to the accumulation of communities. This accumulation of small communities into the larger is what shapes and evolves culture. Not only do we have people, places, objects, events, and communities with their cultures, we also have the ways each culture expresses itself through literature, art, music, and performance. These are all a part of how a community identifies and defines itself, how it communicates. So, a broad but more concise working definition for local history is the practice of interpreting the people, places, objects, events, composite communities, and culture within geographic proximity and how they express themselves. We're including the physical, the social, and the cultural in a place and time, and self-expression. For our example, keep in mind it's the relationships and interactions that are important, not the names or dates. Let's look at a ship at sea. The ship is a locality and a community. A narrative of what takes place on the ship while it's at sea is a local history. Every interaction, past and present, affect the context of our ship's community. Now, let's look closer at our ship's community. The captain, crew, the ship itself, even the materials on board all have a context. Who or what they are, how they got on board, and the communities they were a part of before they boarded the ship. For now, let's look at the most relevant communities. The captain is part of a community of vessel commanders. The officers are part of a larger officer community and the one on board. The crew are also a part of the greater naval community, as are the captain and officers. They are all a part of a composite of communities. There is a considerable amount of commonality, but there are differences in context. Now, let's consider the voyage, the events that occur throughout the voyage, the interactions of the crew, the weather, sea conditions, and events, the doldrums they slog through, and the 20-foot seas they survive. Our ship and its crew are a composite community on a shared adventure. When two ships at sea engage, each with its own local history and narrative, two distinct communities and cultures interacting, they form another larger community with its own local history and narrative from the point they engage forward. There may or may not be any lasting consequences of this engagement, but for a period of time, they share a composite narrative and they will carry with them at least some context from the shared engagement. Building on this scenario, let's say we have a British man-o-war escorting a merchant convoy of six vessels, and they are engaged by a patrol of three French frigates. That's 10 vessels and 10 communities composited into three larger communities, the French military, English military, and English merchant communities. The two English communities are part of a national community. So how many local histories do we have in play? If we count by ship, there are 10, by trade, there are three, and by nation, there are two. By engagement, there is one, but they are all composites of the other communities they belong to. So, which local history are we going to interpret? What is the composition of that community? And what's its culture in that narrative? Is it the merchant bark that slipped away unmolested and their harrowing tale of escape? 
the courageous captain, and his dedication to crew and mission. There are several narratives to choose from. They are all individual and composite communities with independent and composite cultures and contexts. Now, for the historian and public historian, here's the kicker. Which local history is relevant to your audience? The one you plan on presenting your interpretation to? What is your intention? Will you interpret to their expectations? Or are you going to challenge them with a different, difficult, or awkward perspective? Will you present the engagement from the perspective of the French, the English, or from the perspective of the merchants? How about that bar that escaped the engagement? The naval engagement presents a historian, or public historian, with a lot of options, and each one begins with a local history starting with a person, object, or event, building outward concentrically to a crew or cargo, to a vessel, to a group of vessels. Beyond this, we see the connective tissue of local history as it connects to the larger concentric circles of grander histories. An ocean, a theater of war, a war. The war and its effects on the nations around the combatants, the Atlantic, and the world. I used two terms there, concentric circles and the connective tissue of local history. I want to touch on those before moving on. Let's start with the concentric. What do I mean by concentric circles? Concentricity is the equidistance of a circle at all points from its center. The circles around a target are concentric. Every person has an influence in some form on the people around them, like the concentric circles from raindrops on the surface of water. As our influence moves further away from us, it becomes diluted, and as it interacts with others, it's altered. You can think of the visible rings or ripples as steps away from the source. Some sources have more influence than others, so their influence remains stronger as they move further away from the source. The same is true for people. Some naturally exert more influence, some gather strength by merging influence with others, and some cascade into movements and revolutions because the influence was the right influence at the right time, and it was supported by others. In local history, you can choose how far from the center subject you want to explore. By how far, we're talking about relationships. Think about President Lincoln. Which Lincoln are you thinking of? Are you thinking about the poor boy from Kentucky? Or maybe the self-educated lawyer from Indiana? How about the president during the Civil War? The story of Lincoln can be constrained by time frame or to the man himself, his immediate friends and family, or it can ripple out to include his generals like Grant. The story could spread to the wider political and social effects of the Civil War and Lincoln's legacy in the Reconstruction era. The ripples or concentric ripples are the relationships, shared, strengthening others, or diminishing them. The practice of local history is that connective tissue that connects individuals in a community and communities to each other. The micro to the macro where we do history that's broader in scope than local history. Let's look back at the ships for a moment. When we had two ships, we had two local histories that interacted. When we had 10 ships, they interacted in several ways, and we could say we had layers of concentric expansion, the merchants meeting up with their escort as a first layer, and then another when the convoy met up with the French patrol. Broad or narrow, local history is at the core. Okay, let's say we have collected a lot of data. It's time to produce our deliverables. As a historian, or public historian, how are we going to interpret this data? How are we going to engage with our community? When engaging with our community, we need to consider how our subject has interacted and communicated with the community. Did our subject affect our community directly, or was it a broader cultural effect? One of the great things about local history is its flexibility. It can be expressed in just about any medium. It can be interactive or static, it's scalable, geographically, and in time span. And probably most importantly, it's scalable in concentricity. The practice of local history, interpreting the people, places, events, communities, and culture, and how they express themselves, the connections between the micro and macro. Local history can stay local, focused on the local aspects of the subject of research, 
Keep in mind, however, that even a narrow local history will provide at least clues representing the local environment, commerce, economy, communities, and culture. Local history is the texture, the context of the micro. It's the building blocks, the brick and mortar of the macro. There's an axiom in politics, that all politics is local politics. The idea is that local politics affects national politics in profound ways. Local politicians become state politicians who become congressmen and senators, and state politicians and representatives become presidents. They stay in office by representing their constituencies, so it's the local needs that drive the national political discourse. I think the axiom is true for history as well. All history is local history.